And welcome everyone to the second day of Heartland Conference Tournament Baseball as we have the St. Edwards Hilltoppers here playing against the University of Arkansas Fort Smith Lions. That first pitch in there swinging strike one. As that ball is grounded to second base, taken by a second baseman, the first out is recorded. Joining me today, Robin Johnson. Robin, how are you doing? I'm doing great today, Joe. Glad the weather is not so humid and muggy. Mm -hmm. Catcher, it is Kyle a Harris. much clearer day today as we are set to get in three ball games here today. A beautiful day. Uh, no uh, real threat of rain here today. Uh, nice breeze blowing. And, uh, I would definitely say it. it's uh, baseball weather today. Oh, definitely. As that first pitch inside, ball one. Baseball weather indeed. It's set for summer. And uh, quick congratulations to all the graduating seniors today. Uh, Robin, any uh, particular seniors you'd like to uh, say congratulations to? Uh, a couple of my friends are graduating today, so always good. Uh, it's a great feeling to be graduated, so congrats to all of them. Mm -hmm. yep. Alright, as, uh, as the count here is one and one for Harris, as we have one away. I'm pretty sure all the fans out there can definitely hear the wind blowing through the mics. You know, yesterday, every now and then, we get a, a little breeze, but today I think you might see why this ballpark is a hitter's ballpark. Now that the wind is present, we might see some uh, home runs out there today. What do you think, Joe? Uh, I, I think so. Uh, definitely uh, more of hitter's weather here today. It's the count is three and one. We only saw the one home run yesterday from the uh, tournament leading uh, home run hitter, Derek Michigamba from the St. Mary's Rattlers. As that pitch is fouled off, count is full now. And we will see those Rattlers later on here today, 3.30 is start time, I do believe. First hit of the day. St. <laughs> Edwards coming in as a two seed. They were upset by a three seed Newman yesterday. And University of Arkansas Fort Smith, the four seed. They will be the home team today because uh, they did not get the opportunity to yesterday. And a uh, bit of a interesting format, Robin. Uh, if as we get later down the line. Could this possibly set up a, a potential for uh, the one seed or the higher seeds to not be the home team in a potential championship game? Uh, yeah, I think, Joe, the way it works is whoever um, in the tournament, I mean in the championship, wh whoever is the home team is the team that hasn't been home the most. And so, um, like, let's say St. Edwards does move on into this until the third game today, they would be home twice. And then the championship, I think it's just a flip of a coin. Okay. As one and one, now the count. Runner on first. The batter is Shank. Adam Shank uh, went one for four yesterday. A little bit of a, of a kind of slow day for him as he's batting 374 on the year with the four home runs. And it's grounded off to Lazily on the first base side. And count is now one and two. And even though uh, St. Edwards was upset yesterday, Joe, against Newman, it might have been a better situation for St. Edwards to be in the loser's bracket because if they were in the winner's bracket, they would already be facing the number one seed, St. Mary's. I think that's better for St. Mary's as well to face Newman as they took uh, them 6-0 in the season. But I think that for these two teams, St. Edwards and St. Mary's, not to play each other quite yet may have been the best option for both of them uh, here today. As 
Hands Shake goes down swinging there. This game is a crucial one. Joke, the winner of this game will move on. The loser out of the tournament will be the first elimination. As that first pitch thrown over. Now, knowing that you have a elimination game here, Robin, do you think these players have a different approach at all, whether it be the pregame or endgame? I think that if they didn't come out in tents yesterday, they're, I'm sure they did, but I think like they just come out multiplied, you know, that intensity, just knowing the game is literally on the line and their season could end today. I think that for both teams, probably the intensity is very high, the pressure is very high for both. As Wes Caning now steps to the plate, two for five yesterday with the two RBIs. 0-1 uh, the count here with two away. The rest of the Hilltoppers lineup looks like this. We have Johnson followed by Harris. After him will be Adam Shank and Wes Caning, who we've all seen so far. After them, Marshall Burford, the right fielder, and then Ransom Lalonda, the shortstop. After that will be uh, Colin Elmore, the third baseman, then Nate Bobrowski, the center fielder, and Hermanson will follow him. Pitching today for them will be Nassus, as we will uh, get into him later. That last pitch fouled off. Oh, and to the count here to Caning. Before that tipped foul, there was an attempt to steal by the St. Edwards player on first. Harris. As that pitch in there, one and two. Do you think the managers manage in a different way here? Uh, we see uh, maybe more steal attempts or some more risks taken here. I would definitely agree with that, Joe. I think that almost like they need to stick to the game that they know they can play by trying to advance every opportunity that they can in order to just, you know, score, 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 score. I think that's the mentality that's going to be today. As that pitch swung on and missed, no run score. There is one hit, no errors committed, one man left on base. We're heading to the bottom of the first, as this is Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. So Rez last thought that we tried to build some more morale in the halls and uh, well we thought why not use the Rowdy Rattlers. One more minute! 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 Shut up! Shut up! Still have a few kinks to work out, but I like where we're going. So Rez last thought that we try to build some more morale in the halls, and uh, well, we thought why not use the Rowdy Rattlers? One more minute! One more minute! One more minute! And welcome back fans as we're here for the bottom of the first inning on the mound for the Hilltoppers Brad Nassis. Nassis on the season a 3.57 ERA with a record of 9-3. He's pitched a total of 68 innings this uh, year and struck out 61. Pretty impressive numbers though. There, I mean, in terms of strikeouts. Curtis Clark. The right fielder will uh, be opposing him. As that first pitch, strike one. Uh, 
the game today should be a good uh, contest show. The Rattlers, I mean, excuse me, Santa Edwards and the Lions nearly split the series during the regular season. Santa Edwards took it 3-2. to two. As that one is a bunt. He does make it. Nice. Pretty interesting, Joe, to see a leadoff bunt, wouldn't you say? Uh, it is, but uh, Curtis Clark with the wheels on first. Yeah. Uh, a good speed, almost a great bare hand play there, but just nearly beat it out as a Elmore made a good, strong, accurate throw after charging the ball, but just barely missed him, and uh, first hitter of the day, now on base for uh, the Lions. Same old, same old for Curtis Clark, though, uh, batting 457 on the year. Yeah. Very impressive play. Yeah, very quick there. And you know the ball wasn't that far from, I mean uh, the ball was pretty far from home plate, probably about halfway down the third base line. And so you know usually you want to bunt a little closer than that, so the third baseman has to run farther. But even though it was closer to the third baseman, he still made the made it to first. Mm. Yeah. Very uh, difficult to bunt like that because if it's too close to home, then the catcher, catcher just get it, yeah. picks it up. But very good job and is it another bunting situation here as Ben Cosman now steps to plate he shows bunt pulls back though ball one and as I was saying uh, San Edwards took the series three to two they didn't play a sixth game because of weather uh, that that final game of the series was canceled earlier in the season so I think these two teams really match up well together and it's gonna be a anyone's game today as Bunnish showed, and it is laid down. No play at second, on to first. In time, first as recorded, Cosma does his job. As Curtis Clark advances into scoring position now for Jordan May. Yes, it's a sack. Center fielder, Jordan May. Jordan May batted 335 on the season. Also had 18 doubles, which led this team and the three home runs. Also led the team in RBIs with 42. May a rough game yesterday. He went 0 for 4 and struck out once. <laughs> NASA steps off, uh, checking the runner Clark. Pitch catches the outside corner, strike one. Here's what the rest of the uh, Lions lineup looks like. Curtis Clark leads off, he'll play right. Ben Cosma, that's second, he'll play left. Jordan May, the center fielder, batting third. Ben Smith, the designated hitter, is in the four hole, followed by Nick Gum at short, Christian Allen at first, Austin Rawls, the catcher, and then Adam Baker, the third baseman, and Ryan Kovas, the second baseman. Will Ryan Grow uh, Ryan Grow will play second base and bat ninth. Oh and two the count here to Jory May. That pitch way outside, one and two now the count. So <laughs> Trying to get him to chase there. What does he use for it? Does he use his SLR camera? That pitch taken to short. Oh! Pretty sure that'll count as an error, Joe. Yeah. Not, not sure. Bit of a weird play there for Lalonda as a uh, almost went. almost hit the runner going to third. Yeah, very risky running by Curtis Clark as a uh, possibly uh, caused Lalonda to lose that ball by running over it. But it will be an error and runners now at the corners here as a uh, the designated hitter Ben Smith now will come to the plate. 
Smith won for four yesterday, and he struck out twice, so so-so day for him. That first pitch fired in there for strike one. Ben Smith batted 287 on the year. He'll be looking to get the first run of the game here, so check over to first by the lefty Nasses. The Lions are in a great position here to, to already put up a run on the board. Possibility for a sack fly. It's only a one out. A hard hit single will definitely put them on the board. Extra bases, and we could be looking at two runs here with May running a center fielder with great wheels at first. That pitch just misses, one one count. Pitch also just misses two and one now. And the Lions, like you said, in a good situation. They put themselves there. The execution with the bunts, uh, the leadoff bunt for a hit, and then the sacrifice. And now a slight miss, an early miscue here early by the Hilltoppers. And golden situation, really. It will fall. One run will score. May is motoring around. One to nothing here early for the Lions. Runners at second and third as the first run has been scored. A stand up double there, just what the Lions needed. Almost taking that runner home, as you said. Quickly put up a run on the board here in the first inning. Still only one out. A man on third and second here. The Lions, further opportunity to keep racking up a few more runs here. It'll be Nick Gum now at the plate. Nick Gum, the shortstop, went one for two yesterday. He walked the uh, two times. On the season, Nick Gum batting an impressive 361 out of the five spot. So another dangerous batter here for the Lions is they look to add to their already one to nothing lead. The first pitch was uh, not in the zone, 1-0 the count, and 2-0 now the count. Harris, the catcher, goes out and we'll have a quick discussion with his pitcher. Possibly just try to calm him down, give him a chance to breathe here. As he tries to battle his way through this early predicament and do damage control here. That pitch taken out of play down the first base foul side. It's two and one now the count here for Gum. shown. The runners are oh. moving up. <laughs> and a strange play there. Wow, it's almost like that was, I don't want to say bad base running, but a little bit of miscommunication there. I think it was uh, Ben Smith who was on second base after that double uh, was taking off hard to third on the play. May was hesitating, so May was actually able to make it back to third. But second, the guy on second was already on third as well. Had a race back to second. Almost uh, in hindsight, uh, Smith should just stayed at third and allowed uh, May to get tagged out, so they'd have first and third here with two outs. But or maybe you know waited a little bit longer. 
until at least the, the catcher showed he was going to throw the first. It's pretty much almost ran straight into the catcher there. As one one count here now to Christian Allen. Runners on first and second. That pitch inside and counts one and one. side and the count will be one and two. left fielder. Lions do manage to score a run though. They score one run on two hits. The one error is committed. They lead this game at the end of one by a score of one to nothing. We'll be back with the top of the second. This is Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back everyone as we get ready to start the second inning. It'll be Burford, Lalonda, and Elmore here as they will face Brandon Taylor. Taylor got in a little bit of trouble last inning, able to work himself out of it. It's that first pitch. Outside, ball one. Pretty crazy inning last inning. Yeah. Especially in that last play, you know, there both for St. Edwards and especially the Lions. Is that one? what he was just motioning to. So now he's talking to him. Very close together trying to get his point across. <laughs> what do you think goes on during those conversations, Ryan? You know, I've always wondered that, Joe, because it's like, are they really going to change your mind no matter what you say? Mm -hmm. And I, ha I have seen it just a few times, but it's, I don't really know what they say. I don't know what they can say, you know. Besides, what are you thinking, or did you not see that, or... But I definitely don't think it's ever a friendly, friendly exchange. Yep. We've, uh, had contact with Manager Charlie Meagle, uh, over this year. I, I remember seeing him get ejected from the game earlier this year. Is that pitch inside, and two and one the count? Maybe we'll, uh, ask Coach Meagle, uh, about that a little bit later. Two and one the count. Oh, and hard this hit. One, uh, grounder to second and one hopper onto first in time. It's the first out is recorded. Shortstop, Ransom Lalonda. It's now the shortstop, Ransom Lalonda, will now come to the plate. <laughs> hey. 
Rob Pender is still having a conversation over there at the third base umpire. As that pitch ripped into left field and will be a single there for a long time. If that ball had been called fair, that runner likely would have advanced to the third right there. Possibility of scores. That one was in the corner. Could have been a double easily, maybe even a triple, depending on the, the runner there. As now number 12, Elmore, will now come to the plate. Colin Elmore, a 276 batter on the year. As he is getting ready. First pitch called, strike one. Elmore went two for four yesterday with the one RBI. Pitch misses and one and one the count here. Runner on first base, one away here as we're in the top of the second inning, one nothing in the ball game. Taylor looks in. Rose Gloria. That pitch foul Robin. ball. This count is now one and two. That pitch spoiled and fouled off, and it will remain one and two. <laughs> Pretty nice sized crowd out here today, supporting their teams. Uh, most of the fans uh, underneath the canopy on the third base side, trying to avoid the sun. I dislike about the windows one that I was using to edit commercials is you can't run audio from one uh, under the other like they you know, want something to do uh, the things audio too you, like premiere I think you can you can see your speech outside and Back to uh, what we were talking about earlier, uh, the St. Edwards possibly benefiting from being in the losers bracket. Uh, in order for St. Edwards to come back and win the tournament, which they could possibly do, they'd have to win the four games. Now, I know they're not thinking about this right now, but how does their uh, pitching have to hold up in that? As this ball is lifted uh, to right field and the catch is made for the second round. And does it possibly factor how they play the game today, or do they use all their pitchers today? Cause it's a must -win game. I think that they're going to try everything they can to win this game. Uh, you know, no matter what the, the pitcher's rotation is, but I think that they're definitely going to have to rely on their pitchers to do well, especially their starting pitchers, to pitch as long as they can, as well as they can. But I think today's the must win, and uh, that's what they're most concerned about now. And not really thinking about the games ahead, but just the game today, right now. As that first pitch in there, ball one. That pitch catches the outside corner, strike one called. The batter, Bob Browski. Bobrowski yesterday went one for four with the one hit uh, and also managed to come around and score. Check over to first back in time. One and one the count with two away. He's going, he was actually watching the rain delay on the Angels Rangers game. As that pitch also called strike. That one appeared to be a little bit low. I'm up here. What do you think, Joe? Uh, I think it appeared like that, but uh, 
just from it? where the uh, catcher caught it, but mm. it might have crossed the plate, you know, just right. But yeah. yeah, but it definitely hit Josh. That pitch bounces in way outside. Two and two, the count here with two away. Deuces across the board, as our own David Tovar would say. Or even, I, I believe you said that as well yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I said it yesterday. I got it from David. I always heard uh, deuces are wild, which yeah. uh, refers to uh, you know, poker. So that pitch fouled back and will remain at two and two. You know, Joe, I'm wondering if today's game, if if that one run in the first for the Lions is going to be enough to clinch the game. You know, St. Edwards scored four yesterday, uh, but the Lions scored only one yesterday. And I'm wondering, you know, is this going to be a high-scoring game or is it going to be a low-scoring game where that only run that we see is that one in the first? Or if it's going to be, you know, more like the first game yesterday where it was 8-4. to four. Three and two the count now. And I agree with you, Robin. Uh, usually you can expect either one way or the other. It's going to be really high-scoring or really low-scoring. Because uh, either the pitchers really turn up the game as the walk is drawn by Bobrowski or the hitters really turn up. If, if a pitcher can get going uh, like uh, in the first three innings, then they're usually set for three or four more innings, which, you know, usually they can just dominate. As now, A.J. Hermanson will now come to play. Hermanson did not play yesterday. Uh, Bo Rogers was playing. one and the count. Runners at first and second for the Hilltoppers. As they look to try to even the score here at one. Hermeson played in 37 games this year. Started 23 of them. As this pitch is lifted down the first baseline. And the catch is made. The side is retired. The Hilltoppers threaten, but they do not score. one nothing. the score remains as we're heading to the bottom of the second as you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. Welcome back, fans, as we get ready to start the bottom of the second here. Austin Rawls will lead us off. After him will be Adam Baker and Ryan Grow. Nasa's back out there to the lefty. His first pitch is high and outside, ball one. Wind still continuing to blow here today. That one is hard hit, up high. Will be caught by the right fielder. Oh, he dropped it, but he had already caught it. Uh, we saw that yesterday. I guess there was a certain amount of time that can pass, but if he drops it, it's already an out. He did drop it after he caught it, but 
it is still an out. Bit of a weird occurrence to happen two times in two days. As now Adam Baker will step to the plate here. First pitch called strike one. 7-8-9 here for the Lions. We did manage to get a run across last inning. Threatened to get another, but a mix-up running the base paths as uh, that one goes between the legs of the catcher and one and one the count here with one away. Baker yesterday went 0 for 3. And with that 0 for 3, he struck out one time. That pitch called strike two. One and two now the count to Baker. And wind up, here's the pitch from Nassis. Oh. Got him swinging. Looks like a change up there. Looks like he was chasing that one a bit. Mm -hmm. As two away here for the Lions. As Nassis looks to work a quick inning. I think that's also going to be key today, Joe, is trying to get as many three up, three down innings as they can. Uh, uh, quick innings for the pitchers are great innings. Mm -hmm. Especially in a in an A where the fielders as well are that they're going to be out in the sun all day and the, the, the winner of this game will have to play again later on today. Yeah, and, and you know, it's quite a break to play at 12 and then to have a game at 7 and I'm wondering what the teams are going to do if they're going to go back to the hotels or if they're just going to stay here. It's a bit of an interesting point. Uh, do possibly uh, they try to go into the gym or something here at the University of the Incarnate Word, maybe turn the AC up and try to lie down and relax for a little bit. As I'm not sure how much rest you can get if you that for a walk. How much rest you can get if you're still sitting out in the sun, even if you are in the shade. I mean, how much your body can recuperate still being outside and in this type of weather. And we really hope these players keep properly hydrated. That way we don't see uh, anyone cramp up or uh, possibly uh, pass out from dehydration. here today so uh, Nassis checks over to first uh, the bat is Curtis Clark the leadoff man last time he butted his way up on the uh, third baseman playing almost up on the grass but not quite so that throw over to first again First pitch fired in there, strike one, 0 oh 1 count. As Curtis Clark looks to uh, help out this two out rally. Another throw over there. They're being very careful with Ryan Grow here. Here's the pitch. Oh, straight One. back to him. Over at third base, throw oh. is high. And the runners will advance. Heading home oh, wow. is Grow. Oh, no. Slides in. Tag is applied. He is out. Bit of a gamble there by the Lions. They get burned. Oh, 1 nothing. Still the ball game. They do lead, though, as we are heading now to the top of the third. As you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live.
Second baseman, Taylor Johnson. Welcome back fans, Taylor, Johnson, Harris, and Shank123 do up here as we start the top of the third inning. Here's the first pitch to Johnson, he's showing bun, but it pulls back, 1-0 and on the count. Johnson, as we were talking about him yesterday, uh, second in the Heartland Conference, tied for second, that is, for home runs during the regular season. As he rips that pitch into right field and beyond with the leadoff single. Let's just be a people named Johnson are good at baseball, huh, Roman? Yeah, I guess so. Definitely tell the height difference there. Kind of making a little jab at him there, but he is a lot shorter than a lot of players, but he packs a lot of power. I believe that's his motto. As that evens out the hit count for the Lions and St. Edwards, three and three apiece now. St. Edwards does have two errors on the game already. It's only the third inning. You really need to watch that. For those of you wondering how that uh, last play was scored, it was ruled a hit initially. The runners did advance on the high throw, however, so it, there was an error. But then the putout was recorded, and I believe that one was scored 3-2. to two, The first baseman making the throw there. 1-0 the count here. Bunt was being shown. It is the late throw. It's Harris, the catcher, trying to move Johnson into the scoring position. to be uh, poking a little bit of fun at Johnson. It is because Robin is the cousin of Taylor Johnson. So a little bit of family teasing, never heard anything. Pitch out here, Johnson going, and he's in there and steals it anyway as the throw was bounced in by uh, the catcher. It definitely looked like the catcher was, was anticipating that throw, that, that pitch was way outside. He was already up on his heels a bit throw but Johnson does make it he's one of the league's uh, leader in steals and so uh, I, th I think they were ready for him to steal but they, they weren't able to catch him in time great jump by Johnson there is a bunt may still be in effect here and Harris able to lay it down it's a beauty bunt is laid down and now Shank will come to the plate Quickly, that leadoff hit has turned into a scoring opportunity. Taylor making it all the way to third off a steal and off that sack bunt. I think that's exactly what uh, Health Hoppers wanted out of Taylor. Just had a question asked to me on my Twitter, Robin. The question was, how much do these pitchers pitch during this tournament? As that first pitch is roped into right field, hooking, foul. Great effort there by the right fielder, but he wasn't able to come up with the play. Uh, to answer the question, the starters usually will have one start during this tournament. They'll go uh, anywhere from, well, they're hoping to go anywhere from seven to nine innings. The main concern, though, in the tournament is the bullpen. Good example of this, we saw uh, Steven Johnson yesterday, the uh, closer for the Hilltoppers, come in and try to close out the game. He was set to pitch two innings, wasn't able to get the job done, but it's likely that we'll see uh, Steven Johnson again today pitching on, you know, well, no, with no rest, and that we might even see him again in the second day, which, you know, is a lot of work, especially for a guy who has a fastball that's been clocked at 102. Deep fly, center field, Johnson tagging up, throw will not be in time as he's in there standing up, and we have a tied ball game at one apiece here in the top of the third. I think we saw there Johnson doing his job well as the leadoff hitter, making it all the way home. We also see you know, familiar with that, and, and, and Billy Richard 
on the Rattlers. Uh, it's so key for that leadoff hitter to get on base. Thone is chopped to second. Will be out for the third out of the inning, but nonetheless, Hilltopper scored it, even it out. Score now one to one going into the top of the or bottom of the third. You're watching Heartland Conference Tournament on Rattlers Live. And welcome back fans, it'll be Ben Cosmo and Jordan May and Ben Smith here this inning. These players are players that helped manufacture the run for the Lions earlier in the game. Uh, the gate to the first base dugout for the Hilltoppers was open. It's been closed and we're ready to get underway. First pitch outside, ball one. And NASA's uh, for the Hilltoppers start to get on a clean slate, meaning if another p pitcher comes in and it's still tied and the Lions are able to score, Nassus will not get the loss. Mm -hmm. So I think it's almost a little bittersweet for it to start on a clean slate for the for the pitcher. Mm -hmm. As he uh, looks to settle in here, was pretty quick and efficient last inning after giving up the run in the uh, bottom of the first. So we're down under way here in the bottom of the third. First pi uh, pitch swung on and missed. And one and two now the count here. Nass is probably feeling a lot better about himself now that uh, he has that run support. Hoping to get those bats back into the lineup quickly here as we mentioned. That pitch catches oh, the outside wow. corner called strike three. It's one away here. If Nassus wasn't feeling good already, he definitely is now striking out the leadoff man. Oh, yeah. And a very good-looking breaking ball there as he just painted on the corner of the plate there. Jordan May now coming to the plate. May on the day, 0 for 1. He's looking to get on base for the first time today. Wynn picking up, almost knocking over some of Joe Rodriguez's prize. Oh, that one lying straight to shortstop for the second out. It's turning out to be possibly a, a quick 1-2-3 one, one, inning here for Massis. Great positioning by the shortstop. Ben Smith now at the plate. RBI so far today for the Lions. Off of that double that he ripped. That pitch was outside, ball one. And he had that uh, mix up running the bases earlier that possi possibly cost the Lions extra runs. 2 0 now here. Definitely a bizarre play on that one. A 
That pitch swung on and missed. Two and one on the count with two away here. Nass is definitely finding its strike zone. We're getting very sharp on the mound. His pace is also quickened a, a little bit. Throwing with more confidence. See, so he bends that one in there. Strike two. And two and two now the count here as Nassus looks to work himself a one, two, three inning. Conference, he missed a total of one shot. That pitch fouled off. As we'll do two and two again. Fouled off trying to stay alive here. Two and two count two outs. In the bottom of the third. Pitch. Full count now. Tie ball game. Uh, hits are equal across the board. Three apiece for each team. St. Edwards has two errors so far. They have committed one error every inning except for this inning. As Smith takes a walk there. You're just bragging on Nassus and Short saying how sharp he looked. And then he comes back and throws two pitches like that in a row. One that two that weren't even close to the zone and Ben Smith now on and even though it's with two outs uh, the usual rule with walks is if you walk a guy comes around and scores but not the exception yesterday with uh, our own Carl O'Neill <laughs> as Carl O'Neill was the winner yesterday when the Rattlers won by a score of two to one O'Neill walked a total of five batters struck out six and uh, while the Rattlers worked their way to a win. Check over to first. Back in time. 0-1 oh the count here. Two away. As we see a couple of uh, scouts filter in. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're definitely here for Steven Johnson. Likely going to make an appearance later in the game for the Hilltoppers. Mm -hmm. They were here yesterday as well, clocking uh, his fastballs. He's the number one top draft pick, or suspected, uh, this year. Likely will not play senior year at St. Edwards, but in the league. So that pitch is foul. <laughs> and you hear a bit of a jeer from one of the fans here. Johnson does make an appearance we'll try to have someone run down and take a peek at the scouts radar gun and see uh, just how fast he's throwing here Nick Gum the batter. As Smith takes his lead from first. Here's the pitch. High and outside, two and two, the count with two away here. Also high and a full count now. Last time there was a full count, a walk was committed. Hopefully for Nassus, he's able to, to throw one that's hittable and not have two men on base from walks. Runner goes with the 3-2 count. Pitches outside, ball four. Runners now on first and second, and Nassus looking a bit shaky, and he'll get a visit from the pitching coach. Christian Allen will come to the plate. Should Allen reach, then it be Austin Rawls, the catcher, after him. Yes. 
another great opportunity here for the Lions. Christian Allen has gone over one earlier today. We might have heard our own Scott Fonger calling the shot here. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off on the third base side out of play. Catch made there by one of the Newman University players. Newman looks like most of their team has already arrived, if not all of it. Possibly doing some scouting here as a... I believe I saw a couple of Rattler players also have arrived, but... They will probably be arriving individually as they are closer to campus while Newman will be traveling on a bus along with the other two teams. One and one now the count here. First baseman Christian Allen looks to put his team on top. That pitch hit off his foot. Foul ball called right away. One and two now the count. Uh, St. Ed's coach again looking, can't see it on the video, but he stepped out of the dugout having a few words, but steps back in, is okay with the call apparently. Three questionable, well, could be questionable call, calls so far. Uh, two by the third baseman now, and that one off of uh, Allen's foot. That first call uh, robbed St. Edwards of what looked like a double. Here's the pitch to Allen. Breaking ball, high and tight. Two and two, again the count. Here's the pitch. Allen takes it up the middle, but right to the shortstop. Oh. Played not in time at second, but he throws over to first in time to nab Allen and end the inning. Great effort there by the shortstop as he was taken out by the base runner. Score remains 1-1 one to one as you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back fans as we are starting the top of the floor now. Lions won as a score in scoring this tightly contested ball game. First pitch taken into left field. It falls in for a single. As Burford has himself a leadoff single. We also see Wanda and Elmore this inning. <laughs> the 
Honda now coming to the plate. The last time we saw the uh, Hilltoppers get their leadoff runner on, they bunted, were able to get him across. Wanda shows bunt here, pushes it toward the first base side, and the sacrifice is made as Burford now advances into scoring position. We didn't really notice it before, but there are four umpires out there today, one on each base, and I believe in the second game there's going to be two more umps, one in left and one in right field. Really just Another further evidence of these uh, the importance of the games. Yeah. yeah. Six umpires we rarely see, especially uh, what well, we see uh, usually, I believe, a uh, two or four man crew for the regular season games. Six umpires I've only really seen in. Uh, Playoffs, uh, they have it obviously in Major League Baseball. Uh, even the uh, Little League World Series championship game, uh, I was surprised to see six umpires out there. I think just all those extra eyes out there it can kind of almost serve the purpose to eliminate fans saying, you know, if we would have had better umps. I mean, you can't really say that when there's six out there. Mm -hmm. It's interesting though, to uh, your point made earlier though, if an umpire makes a call though, how do you overrule that call? Like, uh, yeah, exactly. We, we had the uh, the double earlier. Perhaps if we had had a left field umpire, he would have signaled fair, the other one signaled foul. I believe what they do in that situation is they play on and then uh, the umpires get together and they decide whether it was fair or foul. And then after that, uh, if it was indeed foul, then you know the runners obviously just go back to their previous bases. If it is fair, then you know, the result of the play is the result of the play. <laughs> but a uh, running bunt here pulls the third baseman off the bag, and he is safe at first. Elmore reaches on the push bunt. You saw him get the running start there. Burford moves up to third and we see once again the bunt. Just really the Hilltopper's best friend so far. As Nate Borowski will now step to the plate. We wonder if he'll bunt. But Hilltoppers, most of their runs have been produced by bunts. Sacrifice fly also would work for Borowski. I think just the speed of the Hilltoppers really works to their advantage as we've seen so far in this game. Bunt is shown. Hopefully we won't have a situation, I believe. Was it the Lions who they bunted and the third baseman, yeah, the th I mean the man on third tried to take home and ended up in a strange yeah, miscommunication of running. Yeah, Hopefully that does not happen in the Hilltoppers. Bunt showed again. Pull back, but strike one is called one and one on the count. Sign again, he has it now. Does look cool. That pitch taken outside corner, one and two the count. And you think that would take the bun out of play here. Here's the pitch. Outside, two and two the count there. See Borowski almost uh, jumping out of the box there. Uh, the anticipation and excitement must be a lot. <laughs> Especially with only one out, a lot can happen here. That pitch taken up the middle, and that's what he didn't want. As four to three, the double play there, and the Lions managed to get out of the jam. One to one, still the score here as we're heading to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live.
welcome back fans as we are here now in the bottom of the fourth inning a blown opportunity there for the Hilltoppers as they were not able to score a run one out runners on first and third as Austin Rowell swinging on the first pitch missing 0-1 oh the count we'll see Austin Rowell's this inning followed by Adam Baker and Ryan Grow 7-8-9 here as they go out and they're facing Nassus once again on the mound a pitch inside one and one the count here so far a uh, good outing by both pitchers so far lasting pretty good I need to charge this bed. yeah as that pitch low two and one the count one to one still the ball game here as we are approaching the halfway point that pitch taken into right field base hit as Austin Rawls has managed himself a leadoff single Adam Baker, the third baseman, now will come to the plate. And I wonder if we'll see uh, more bunts. We, we've already seen a lot of bunts this game. Kind of a, I, I guess we'd say resembles more of a National League game than American, but let's see uh, what Baker here to, does here, the number eight hitter. Here's the pitch. He is showing bunt. And it's pulled back but called strike one. Yeah, pretty interesting to see all these ones. I, I've never seen a, a race between the Rattlers and both of these teams where, where there's been this many. It's only the fourth inning. I think we consider the Rattlers an American League ball club. I'm just saying. As Bunt shown and it is laid down. A great one throw but called foul. Yeah, that he definitely kicked the ball or definitely some sort of interference. Wow. As the Hilltoppers manager once again talking to the umpires, I don't know what the discussion is about. The play went in his favor, I believe. So I think it was a well executed bunt and the runner would have been safe at second. back just in time, two and two with the count. A lot of confidence being shown in Baker here and his ability to execute with two strikes here. Third baseman playing way in. So he's swinging away here and loops one into left field. That'll be extra bases. Goes down in the corner. Uh, looks like the third he is coming home come now. Is Ralph. Play at the plate. Play is in time. Rolls is retired. A great relay there. Left field to short to the catcher. Amazing play there as this ball game remains knotted at one to one. It's the second caught at home, I <laughs> believe, for both on the Lions. Great throwing arms out there by the Hilltoppers, able to get him in time. As well as from the catcher. Yep. Grow now at the plate. He was the first hill, uh, first line uh, thrown out at home. I do believe. As Raw ends up at second base off of the play. We're still knotted at one apiece here. 
number nine hitter is Grow. Step off there by the pitcher, not Nassus. It's a lot of great defensive plays being made so far today on the base paths. That pitch outside, 1 0 the count. One away here, a man on second. <coughs> Here's the pitch to row. Paints the outside corner, one and one the count. Should grow reach, we'll see the top of the order with Curtis Clark and Ben Cosma. <coughs> one away here, runner in scoring position. It's really going to be a testament to the Lions if they're able to capitalize on that double. They almost did to score another run. Uh, but he's in a great position to score despite the other man being caught at home. Back to your point earlier, uh, Harris, the catcher, a very good job there holding on to the ball. You saw he had to lunge out with the glove to make the tag. 1-2 now the count. And could have been a dangerous tag, but he was able to make the play. And just really sharp defensively for the Hilltoppers here so far. But despite the fact that they, uh, they have those two airs. So that pitch in the dirt. Two and two to the count. And it goes back to the, the conversation we had earlier about the maybe the more aggressive plays on the base path that we see. Uh, we've seen the, the Lions do it more so than the Hilltoppers, but I think uh, it seems like the Lions have had more base runners up to this point than the Hilltoppers. That's my three, Joe. Swung on and miss. Strike three. As now Christian Allen will come to the plate. I uh, beg your pardon, Curtis Clark. chase but not able to make the play. One and two now down here on the bar. Two now, two away. Hear a car horn going off uh, in the parking lot. In time, the side is retired. A lot of excitement, but no run scored. The Lions do threaten. One to one, still our ball game as we're heading to the fifth. 
You're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back as we get ready to start the fifth inning. A.J. Hermanson leading off, takes the first pitch, pops it up to right field, catch is made, and one away on one pitch here. Second baseman, Taylor Johnson. Now second baseman, Taylor Johnson will come to the plate. Johnson with the single in his last at bat. Uh, managed to steal second base, advances on the bunt over to third, and then scored on the sack fly. Takes this first pitch inside corner, strike one. This pitch swung on and missed. One and one now. Like, oh and two, the count now. I beg your pardon. As Johnson finds himself in a quick hole. Pitch swung on and missed, and Johnson out on three pitches. As quick inning so far from Brandon Taylor. Harris, the catcher, comes to the plate. Harris so far, uh, two great plays at the plate, able to apply the attack to two separate runners, keeping it at one to one here. Takes that first pitch, flies it to right field. The catch is made. Inning is over. Five pitches all required for Taylor as uh, Hilltoppers go one, two, three. As we're heading to the bottom of the fifth, and you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back fans, that last half inning very quick, 
Again, only five pitches needed to Four get through it. Left fielder Ben Cosma. As now Ben Cosma will lead off here. Cosma, the two hitter, he'll be followed by May, and then Ben Smith, the designated hitter. As the first pitch from Nassus, inside corner called strike one. This pitch swung on, foul off, 0-2 now the count. As Nassus working quickly here. That pitch high. Now it's commonplace to see one and two the count. Here's the pitch from Nassus. Fouled off. As one and two the count remains. Cosmo staying alive here. Almost goes three on it. Where they're like, what you're supposed to be focused on is raised out of the Here's the pitch. Low and inside, two and two to the count. One to one, still the score here as we play in the fifth. It's still even at five apiece. That pitch high and tight, count goes full. Hilltoppers have two airs to the Lions who have none. Very tightly contested ball game in our first elimination game here in the Heartland Conference Tournament. A pitch swung on and lifted down the first base side, but it will be foul and out of play. As the count stays full. Nassus. That pitch also fouled out of play. That pitch outside and Cosmo has worked himself a leadoff walk. Great at bat by Cosmo as he battles, fell behind one to two, but able to work the walk. Jordan May now the hitter. May 0 for two so far in the day. We'll see what he does here. The Lions will lay down the bunt. Or allow their number three hitter to swing away. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. Jordan May will be swinging away here. Bunt shun now. And it's laid down to third base. A hard bunt. Throw over to first in time. As May is retired. But the sacrifice is laid down. Ben Smith. Any the number four hitter now, Ben Smith, the cleanup man, will bat Smith with the double earlier, which has scored the only run for the Lions so far today. Looking to duplicate that effort. Here's the pitch. <laughs> Called strike one. Pitch caught the outside corner. Cosmo takes his lead from second. He 
Here's the pitch. Fouled off, and the designated hitter, Ben Smith, finds himself down 0-2 here. Not here. Here's the pitch. The pitch lifted down the first base side. Still leading from second. He's going down to third. That pitch put to short. And the throw is made in time for the second out of the inning. Cosmo appeared to believe that the ball into left field uh, had a slip on the left side. Stop Nick Gum is at the plate. Cosma now 90 feet away from the Lions taking the lead here. So Nick Gum hits a nubber and the ball is called foul. It must have bounced off of the plate there. And 0 and 1 the count here. It would be Christian Allen following him. Gum so far today does not have to do that. Strike one, uh, strike two call. Like a oh and two, now the count here. This is Gum's third plate appearance. As we are in the bottom of the fifth inning. Oh and two, the count here, two away. Back to the pitcher. Third out is recorded. We remain not in at one as this elimination game rolls on to the sixth inning. One to one, the Lions and Hilltoppers. As you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. Welcome back as we're underway in the sixth inning. One to one, still the score here in this tightly contested elimination game. That first pitch fired in there, strike one. That pitch just outside as Adam Shank is at the plate here. 
one and one in the count. They appear to be beating the crap out of each other. Two to one now the count. Pitch taken into center field. May makes the play as one away here. Wes Caning, the designated hitter, now coming to the plate. Caning 0 for 2 so far in the ball game. Strike two, zero oh and two. Now the count. As Caning finds himself behind early, a pitch high and outside to the lefty. Now the count. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Outside, and what was once a 0 2 count is now 3 2. As Kaning trying to battle his way back here against Brandon Taylor. Caning takes it up the middle, short stops over, makes the play, and Caning is retired. Right fielder, Marshall Burford. Marshall Burford, the right fielder, now coming to bat. Burford, one for two so far today. Here's the pitch. Inside, 1 and 0 the count. Here's the pitch. That pitch catches the inside corner, 1 and 1 the count. Burford, 1 for 2 so far on the day. He looks to get something going here. That pitch fouled off. Count is now one and two. One and two the count. Here's the pitch. Swung on and driven deep left center field. And an amazing diving catch by Jordan May. The inning goes 1-2-3. May with the exclamation point. We remain tied at one apiece as we now head to the bottom of the sixth inning. 1-1 one one, still the score as you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rappers Live.
and welcome back fans as we get ready to start the bottom of the sixth inning. Christian Allen will be leading off here. He'll be followed by Austin Rawls and Adam Baker. Allen takes the first pitch, hooking foul down the first baseline. 0-1 oh, in the count. So far today, 0 for 2. Let's hear the pitch from Nasus. Inside, 1 and 1 the count. of the day. Here's the pitch. Swung on, taking the first base underneath the glove of the diving first baseman. Turn for Allen at first as he is on with a leadoff single. Now it'll be the catcher, Austin Rawls. Rawls the uh, double last inning. Almost had an RBI on that play, but the amazing play at the plate led to the prevention of that, as we are still tied at 1-1. One to one. Christian Allen gets the first base hit in a couple of innings here. Rawls shows bump, pops it up, and it's dropped, but the out is called as Rawls is retired. Bit of a strange play there, but Adam Baker will now come to the plate as the sacrifice bunt is not executed. Here is the pitch. And bounces in the dirt, but Good block there by Harris, and 1-0 the count. Here's the pitch. Check over to first, back in time. Baker on the day, one for two. It's that pitch outside and the count is two and zero. Oh. Yeah. Here's the pitch outside and the count runs to three and zero. Oh. Christian Allen takes his lead from first. As that pitch is called a strike. Three and one the count. Looked like Baker was taking all the way there. After Baker, uh, Grow would come to bat. Throw over to check on Allen. He's back in safely. Here's the pitch. Baker. You can hear the wind picking up a bit in the uh, mics. Ryan Groves. Now Ryan Groves will come to the plate. Grow 0 for 1 today as the number 9 hitter will look to put his team on top here. Nasa 
steps off the mound. He checks the runners. And now comes to the plate. Bunt shown. It's laid down. Third baseman throws on to first. And time. It's the second out. Is reported. And now runners on second and third with Curtis Clark, the leadoff man at the plate. Right fielder, Curtis Clark. Curtis Clark, two for three so far today. Yet to cash in though on a RBI opportunity. As the leadoff man looks to get on base here. Harris and Nassas have a conference at the mound. Two away here. When are y'all doing? Where did y'all put that? Curtis Clark, batting 457 on the year, with 11 RBIs for the leadoff man. He was able to score 17 runs and record 32 hits. And a new pitcher now coming in as Nassus will sit down. <laughs> Nassus pitched a total of five and two thirds inning. He's still responsible for the runners on second and third. We'll come back and tell you about the new pitcher as you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back fans, Steven Johnson, the hard-throwing righty, is on the mound. Johnson on the regular season, 16 saves, an ERA of 1, and 63 Ks. That first pitch thrown in there, strike 1. Johnson, a shaky outing yesterday. Looking to improve on that today. Not very often that we see Johnson in the 6th inning. That pitch swung on and missed. The count is quickly 0-2. Oh and two. <laughs> we have uh, one of our scouts down in the stands uh, with a gun on Steven Johnson. We'll see how his velocity is today. 
That pitch swung on and missed. Three pitches, three strikes for Johnson as he is able to end the inning. As we now head to the top of the seventh, inning over. And it's your watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back fans as we are ready to start off the seventh. The shortstop Ransom Lalonda will lead off here to start the seventh. I'm bringing back now uh, Robin Johnson. Robin, how are you doing? Pretty good, Joe. Alright. Uh, so that pitch flied out to right field and Lalonda is retired on one pitch. Robin, last inning we saw Steven Johnson pitch, and we were told on that strikeout pitch he hit 91 on the radar gun. Pretty good velocity, but it's rumored that he's been hit, able to hit up to 102 at times. He's a very impressive player in Johnson, as Elmore now comes to the plate. First pitch called strike one. Crucial time now for St. Edwards to try to get on the board. Again, not too many innings left in this game. Only three at bats left. They really got to do something. As one and one, the count here with one away. And same can be said for the Lions. Both teams uh, in a bit of a, you know, just in a close ball game right here. And Neither team uh, given an inch here as a strike two is called and one and two now the count. Do you think uh, Steven Johnson will continue to pitch, Joe? I think he will. Uh, as that Even pitch. though with, with this many innings left, quite a move there. Uh, two and two the count. Uh, yeah, I, I thought so too when... Uh, <laughs> When I saw that Johnson was coming in, this is the sixth inning, I, I was really surprised. Uh, Johnson, the usual closer, we expect to see him in the ninth inning. But again, uh, as that pitch lined down the third baseline, will be fair, extra bases. It's a stand-up double here for Elmore. But again, as uh, we pointed out, uh, these games are games where you have to do absolutely everything that you can in order to win this game. You know, you're kind of wondering if they're trying to make Johnson a little bit of a relief pitcher or at least having them out there in a few innings to where they can, he can almost like scare the batters or at least stop a few innings uh, from a line scoring with that speed that he has. It's so very hard to hit. I'd assume that they're going to have, uh, they're going to try to have him uh, finish out and pitch these last three innings. Does, what does that do for if uh, St. Edwards wins this game for later on in the day if, when exactly. they're going to have to play again? They're going to have to play again and then possibly if they win that game, pitch again in the championship game. 
and then pitch maybe again if there's two championship games. Quite a move here, but I think it goes back to the very beginning of the game when we were saying, you know, they're going to pull out all the stops, both these teams. This is a must win for today. I suppose this be a, an equivalent to like a, a, a playoff game in uh, football. I mean, you can't really uh, pull any punches in a close game. Uh, I guess this is kind of equal to a, a trick play, I want to say, or something like that or a, a new play that you've been working on and just now running. So Steven Johnson in, in the sixth inning. We'll see if he closes this game out. As now a runner in scoring position here for the Hilltoppers. That ball chopped to first base. First baseman over makes the play. Does advance the runner, however. Balrowski making the diving effort to try to get into first safe, but he is beat. Christian hey, Allen hey, takes it unassisted and now the number nine hitter AJ Hermison will come to the plate actually it appears that we will have a pinch hitter here it'll be number three Bo Rogers who played yesterday your attention please for the no numbers pinch hitting for Hermison number three Rogers, a 345 hitter on the season. So a very capable number nine hitter. Yesterday, Bo Rogers went 0 for 3, did not get the start today. It's that first pitch in there for a ball. You know the count. That closes the day, however, for AJ Hermanson. Two away here, runner 90 feet away from scoring. As we are locked in a one-to-one -one ball game. And that ball bounces under the catcher's leg. 2-0 and now the count here. We see some pitchers warming up in the bullpen for the Lions uh, just in case. As here's the pitch to Rogers. Slide into center field. And an wow. amazing play by Jordy May. That's his second diving catch to rob a run today. We remain knotted at one. As we head to the bottom of the seventh, it's time to stretch. One to one the score as you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. Well, welcome back fans as we get ready to start the top of this excuse me the bottom of the seventh inning Ben Cosmo the number two hitter will be leading off here <laughs> Bo Rogers now in center field Hermanson now uh, out of the game Ben Cosmo today very impressive appearance as we are in a tightly contested one-to-one -one ball game. Cosmo so far 0 for 1 on the ball game, but in the four plate appearances, he uh, he's managed to walk a couple times and have a sacrifice bunt. The count is 2-0 here. 
after Cosma, it'll be Jordan May and then Ben Smith. As here's the pitch from Johnson, inside corner, strike one, 92 miles per hour there on the gun as the count is two and one. Here's the pitch. Outside. Three and one now the count. 92 again on the gun for Johnson. Can you see the gun from here, Joe? See the what? The gun. Uh, we can, uh... Sort of, kind of We see the gun, spy. and then, uh, we have someone, uh, flashing up the speed to us. Oh, wow. That's three and one now. The uh, excuse me, the walk is drawn, and the leadoff Jordan runner is on. Jordan May. Jordan May now coming to the plate as a third baseman, Elmore, coming over, giving Johnson some words of encouragement. Yesterday he got a little bit wild. Is there a reason for concern for uh, Johnson here? Uh, uh, we saw that uh, when he played St. Edward, uh, St. Mary's as well. He, he had a few hit by pitches or and a wild pitch, but I think maybe the way that he throws so hard. I mean, getting up there in the upper 90s, it's got to be hard to control sometimes as well as last. I mean, I can't imagine how hard it is to last nine or three innings throwing that fast. And so it's kind of wondering how long is he going to be out there? As 0-2, quickly the count here for Johnson. <laughs> 0-2, here's the pitch to May. May takes one into deep left field, fly ball, and the catch is made, one away. May, of course, uh, made some great plays out in center field to prevent some runs from scoring for the Hilltoppers, as Ben Smith, the designated hitter, will now come to the plate. Runner goes, here's the pitch, throw down, not in time, as Cosmos in there sliding, 1-0 the count here. Runner now in scoring position here for the Lions, as Smith, the designated hitter, will try to bring him home. Nick Gum waits on deck. That pitch fouled back. One and one the count. <laughs> Smith so far, one for two on the ball game. The only RBI for the Lions on the day. Still a high ball game. Still even on hits, six of six and six a piece for each team. Just a tightly contested elimination game here. And Joe, you know, what do you think about extra innings here? I mean, it's been one to one since the third. What do you think the possibility is of that? Well, at this point, the pitchers have really buckled down and found their group. We just had a pitching change with Johnson, but pretty confident that he'll be able to uh, work his way. So I, I see it's a definitely a possibility and something that if you're St. Edwards and uh, University of Arkansas Fort Smith, you really just don't want to see. I mean, with this being a tournament, but and if playing you're, later today, uh -huh. if you're if you're Newman and St. Mary's right now. Loving the idea of it. 
Newman and St. Mary's will be playing at 3.30, I do believe. And that game, we will bring that to you as the count is full here for Smith. Here's the pitch. Two big hops over to second, throw onto first in time as Smith is retired. And the inning will be up to Nick Gum. Gum so far 0 for 1 today. A couple of sacrifices and walks. As Johnson from the set throws in. Almost hit Gums, but he spins out of the way. 1 0 the count. From the set. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the first base side. One and one the count. Again, this is will be one of the few chances left the Lions have to score in this game unless it goes into extra innings here. told Johnson has gotten up to as fast as 96. One and two the count here with two away. You think you could hit a 96 mile per hour fast? Oh yeah, I think I definitely get without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt, what about you? Mm, probably. Probably knock that one straight out of the park here. Yep. Two and two the count, two away. So we have the all-star team, Robin Johnson, Joe Rodriguez, bringing you the Heartland Conference Tournament here. First I said, and then I screwed it down a little bit. I think it's easy to see why he would be, you know, so, such a powerful draft pick. It's not common for, for guys so young to be able to have that much. That one is straight down the middle there for strike three. And the side's retired. Johnson gets the strikeout. We're heading to the top of the eighth. As now, score is still knotted at one apiece. You're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And welcome back fans as we get ready to start off the top of the eighth inning. Taylor Johnson to lead off. That pitch fired in there for strike one. Johnson was the only run scored in this game. Earlier I believe it was the second inning. Or excuse me, the third. After a leadoff hit, hopefully for the Hilltopper sake, he can get it going again, but not for the Alliance sake. One and one the count here as Johnson rips one toward the second baseman, fields it, and throws Johnson out as that is the first out of the inning. Catcher was excellent team baseball on display when they were able to score that run. Johnson with the hit, stole the base, and
and then the sacrifice by Harris, and then the sack fly after that by Shank. As Kyle Harris, the catcher, now coming to the plate. That pitch, ball one. Harris, uh, another big player in this game. Uh, he's gone one for two. Uh, had that sacrifice bunt like we were talking about. It's this one. Oh, straight into left up the middle. And between those two defenders there. Base hit there. And Harris again. Uh, the two big plays at the plate where he's tagged out the runners. Just calling a solid ball game first as well. Baseman, Adam Shank. As now Adam Shank, the first baseman, will step to the plate. Shank the one RBI for the Hilltoppers. Sacrifice fly back in the third inning. So here's the pitch. This one taken into right field. Catch is made and two away now for the Hilltoppers. You see Shank upset with himself there. I think he uh, thought he just missed take, uh, taking that one out. It's now West Caning will come to the plate. Caning 0 for 3 on the ball game. RBIs. Try, try to put the Hilltoppers up here. That pitch outside. 1 0 the count. Oh, yeah. Harris takes the lead from first. Here's the pitch. Caning hits a number off the end of his bat to third. Throw on to first in time. A very quick inning, Joe. As the side is retired, we head to the eighth. One to one, still the score here as you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. And here we are in the bottom of the eighth inning. Christian Allen leading off here. We're really, really now getting into the wire, Joe. Uh, this is one of their two last at bats, pinning extra innings. Both these teams, I mean, really need to start it going. And nice grab there for out number one. Christian Allen is retired on the first pitch. Austin Rawls, the catcher, will now come to the plate. Rawls had that double earlier today. As he's one for th one for three so far on the ball game. After him will be Adam Baker, and should anybody reach, it would then be Ryan Grow. So here's the first pitch. Strike one. Pretty good looking velocity on that one. So here's the 
Here's the pitch. Just inside. One and one the count here as uh, you hear the Hilltopper fans wanting that one called strike two. Steven Johnson still going strong on the mound for the Hilltoppers. That pitch also inside and two and one the count. I'm not sure uh, what Johnson's longest outing of the year is, but uh. I was just wondering the same thing, Joe. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can uh, get Chad Peters on that and see if he can find out. Wow, interesting thing about Johnson. Last year he was a starting pitcher. Okay. So he, he definitely has the stamina to go extra innings. Uh, and, uh, you don't often see that from a closer. You usually recruit, recruited as a closer. You know, it's not often you see uh, starting pitchers become closers except for, you know, in the MLB. Mm -hmm. Get a little older. Kerry Wood from the Cubs has made that transition from starting pitcher to closer. That's two and two to count here. You also sometimes see the closers make the transition to starter. We saw that back in Boston four or five years ago and now uh, this year with the Rangers, Neftali Feliz doing that. That pitch inside corner. Nice stuff there. Strike three called. Here now. I mean, I, I think it just goes to show if you're a good pitcher, you're just a good pitcher. You know, it doesn't really matter where you are in the lineup. And I think that, you know, Steven starting last year is really working for a benefit for St. Edwards now. Mm -hmm. Really becoming, you know, <laughs> just just a prime pitcher. As Adam Baker now steps to the plate. Time was called for a second as a third baseman is tying his shoe. As here's the pitch from Johnson. Strike one. Think about a pitcher like Johnson. If you don't find your pitch that you want quick in your count, then you know he has a couple other pitches that we've seen him go to today. Uh, with like a nice slider that he got that last strikeout with. As here's the pitch inside. Count is one and one. How many strikeouts um, does Johnson have in this game, Joe? Let's see, uh, Johnson so far today, uh, the three strikeouts out of the uh, six outs he's recorded. So about his usual pace, actually. Is that pitch is called strike two, one and two of the count. We were discussing it yesterday, uh, Johnson with the 60 strikeouts out of the 108 possible outs that he... Uh, recorded as that pitch outside two and two to the count as Baker was about to offer it that one should Baker reach then it would be Ryan Grow the number nine hitter after him that's Johnson from the set here's the pitch Ooh, that one looked pretty I think St. Edwards agreed, but it will be a full count. Got a strikeout with his last full count. Let's see what happens here. Johnson looks in. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Foul down the space side, and we'll do the full count again. Johnson looks in, here's the pitch. That pitch fought off the hands into field, and the catch is made. Side retired. We're heading to the ninth, still tied at one. As this is Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. So Rez last thought that we tried to build some more morale in the halls and uh, 
Well, we thought, why not use the Roger Rattlers? One more minute! 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 Where's your key at? Where's your key at? We still have a few kinks to work out, but I like where we're going. A uh, change at first base for the Lions as we start here in the ninth inning. Marshall Burford will be leading off here. The league's home run hitter. The uh, substitution will be Gordon Miller, the junior now in at first base. This is St. Andrew's last chance. Is that pitch? To get on. ahead on the score. A pitch uh, in on the hands and foul. The count is 0-2 now. Christian Allen now out of the ball game for the Lions. He finished this uh, day 1-4, for four, I believe. Burford takes his time, uh, gathers himself after hitting that ball off himself, and steps back in. It will be Burford, Lalonda, and Elmore here in the ninth for the Hilltoppers. Is that pitch taken foul and remains 0-2. Here's the pitch inside and one and two the count now for Burford. He has pitched a brilliant game. Is that pitch lined off? Foul. Trying to stay alive here in this one and two count. Burford doing a excellent job of fouling off and fighting off those pitches. Trying to get something that he can handle here. Is that pitch oh. catches the outside corner. Strike three called. And Burford goes down one away here in the top of the ninth. Shortstop. As now Ransom Lalonde will come to the plate. Lalonde today. Uh, yeah. One for two. That's that first pitch in there for ball one. Long takes that one into left field. Works that one in there. He's on now with one away here. And Elmore will come to the plate and he doubled in his last at bat. Two for three here today.
And uh, Pierce will now have a Swings, uh, one of the leaders on this team. Because he actually, uh, a couple yeah. innings ago, went out and started the conference with uh, Stephen Johnson. It was him, not the, uh, not the catcher, uh, not the catcher. Uh, excuse me, Harris. Uh, Harris having a big game. Same with Lalonde. Heartland Conference Tournament. Here's, that'll be the ball game for Brandon Taylor. Amazing effort out of him. He allowed one run off of eight hits. And now coming in will be number seven, Paul Smith. We'll tell him, you about him after we get back from this break. As you're watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattler Slide. And welcome back fans. We are here in the top of the ninth inning. One out, one runner on first base. The new pitcher, Kyle Thompson. The closer for the Lions. An ERA of 1.08 on the year, a record of 1-2. and two. He's played in 27 games this year and saved 10 of those games. It's this pitch in there. Ball one. The count is 1-0 and here. Thompson uh, has given up only four earned runs on the entire year and holds opposing batters to a 180 batting average. So that pitch uh, a bit low. So the count here. A very impressive outing from Brandon Taylor as... He threw great stuff here today. He is still responsible for the runner on first as Thompson throws his first strike. Robin, uh, what were your impressions of uh, Brandon Taylor here today and what do you expect out of Thompson? Well, that one is chopped. Not sure if that's going to be an error or a hit. But it does advance the runner. Uh, I think Taylor had a great outing. Uh, allowed eight hits, but only one earned run. Um, in that first inning, I think that he had a very good quality start. And I think, expecting uh, from their closer, that he does close out this game. Uh, already allowed a hit, but just the same type of velocity, really. David Borowski, the left fielder, now at the plate, and 
he is dealt strike one, 0 and 1 the count. Borowski so far today, 0 for 2. As the Hilltoppers will try to push across here. Two runners on, one away, one and one the count. So we are tied at one and one in the top of the ninth inning here. Here's the pitch. Just low and inside. Two and one the count here. This inning has definitely been in the Hilltoppers' favor. Only one out with two men on. This is a great opportunity to get ahead. Especially considering it's it's one of their it is their last out bat of this game. Mm -hmm. Pending extra inning as that count is now two and two. Borowski, uh, should he reach, Bo Rogers would follow. Bo, uh, pitch hit for A.J. Hermanson in the last at bat. Two and two the count. Here's the pitch. Just outside. And it's a full count now for Borowski. Harvey starting to pick up, eliminating the double play in the end of the inning. Uh, two outs now, but did advance the runners. Player 90 feet from home, as you would say, Joe. As now, Bo Rogers at the plate. Rogers has one at bat today. He got out as he's out for one on the day. The first pitch called strike one. off third pitch in there strike two oh and two quickly the count here is Borowski is attacking Bo Rogers you hear the chatter starting to pick up here is that pitch outside one and two now the count Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Throw over to first. The strikeout is completed. Still one to one as we head to the bottom of the ninth. The Lions now with a chance to walk off and win the ball game. As you are watching Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. Welcome back fans, here we are, bottom of the ninth inning, 
as one run will end this game for Arkansas Fort Smith. It's also going to be a good contestment to Steven Johnson now pitching three innings. Pinch hitter here for Ryan Grow, number one Ryan Honganis, the senior, I'm sorry, the junior outfielder. Ryan batted 267 on the year and really saw limited action this season as he played in only 13 games. And it's one and two in the count. I believe he uh, thought he struck out. He started walking back toward the dugout. At one and two in the count here. Ryan uh, gets another chance to uh, swing the bat here. on and miss. Tipped up. And we'll do one and two again. After Ponganis, it'll be Curtis Clark, the leadoff following him, Ben Cosmo. A pitch high and the count is now two and two. The Lions only have two outs left to work with in this inning to advance uh, to the 7 o'clock game. Uh, we'll be seeing extra innings for the first time in this tournament. It's Curtis Clark now comes to the plate. The winner of this game, like you said, will play at 7. And they will play the loser of the game. It will be played at 3.30. So that first pitch from Johnson is high. 1-0 the count here to Curtis Clark. <laughs> Clark, uh, buddy on earlier, but I somewhat doubt that we'll see that here today. Well, right now. That's 2-0 the count here. Clark. Two for four on the ball game. He has scored the only run that the Lions have scored. That pitch fouled off out of play on the first base side. The count is now two and one. There's people out there watching behind us. She can do that. Here's the pitch. Grounded back to Johnson. He's over. Tosses it underhand. Makes the play. And the second out is recorded and it will be up to Ben Cosma now. Ben Fielder, Ben Cosma. Should Cosma may uh should Cosma reach, then it would be Jordan May after him. Jordan May, the excellent day in the field so far, as he will look to bat. But first it's Cosmo against Jordan. First pitch popped up on the first base side. The second baseman over makes the call and does not make the play. Difficult play out there. A lot of foul territory to work with. And it'll be strike one for Cosmo, who must be breathing a sigh of relief there. Johnson from the set. Here's the pitch. 
Oh. And Cosma drills a hit in between short and third. And will be on base. And the aforementioned May will now come to the play. Center fielder, Jordan May. Cosma taking advantage of the uh, foul ball not being caught and uh, able to get a base hit there off of Johnson. So it'll now be Jordan May taking his swings. See the uh, Hilltoppers playing in a uh, no doubles on the third baseline. The third baseman hugging the line there. Their outfielder is playing pretty deep. Extra bases with the speed of Cosmo would not be a good combination. Cosmo out to a pretty nice size lead. Going with the pitch. This one's oh, ripped into wow. left field. This could be a run. Cosmo's being could waved be the around. Game. Cosmo scores. Wow. The Lions win on a walk-off double by Jordan May. And St. Edwards, the number two team, has been eliminated from the Harlem Conference tournament. The Lions move on. They are on the field surrounding Jordan May. You can see the rally caps on some of them. As they will move on, they will play the 7 o'clock game later on today. The final score, 2-1 to one here. Cosma on the move with the pitch there. As now the losing pitcher will be Steven Johnson, the winning pitcher uh, for the Lions. That's an amazing game. Final score 2-1. Two, two runs on nine hits, no errors for the Lions. One run on nine hit with two errors for the Hilltoppers. The Hilltoppers, the number two seed out in two games here. An amazing game. We will be back at 3.30 to bring you the Rattlers versus uh, Newman. In game, as this is the Heartland Conference Baseball on Rattlers Live. We'll see you at 3.30. See you then.